This is the schedule training for the Fedora program management team. Um, and this training video is going to be a little bit different because um, some of the tools that generate the schedule uh, are restricted to um, Red Hat employees. So it's not going to be something where people can directly participate as much as other parts of the project. Uh, but I do want to make sure that um, you know the schedule is understood, you know, some of the philosophy behind it and how um, the tooling works just so that you have an understanding uh, when you do th things that interact with the schedule. As you probably know, Fedora Linux releases on a six-month schedule uh, with targets towards um, the end of April and the end of October. And this is a very predictable schedule. Uh, we've been following it sort of by default for a long time. And a couple of releases ago, I went to Fesco and said, what if we just accepted this as our schedule in perpetuity? Um, and so now basically the schedule always exists this way unless we actively change it, where previously uh, each release I had gone to Fesco and said, would you please approve this new schedule? And they always said, yep. And it was basically the same as the last one. One of the things we do in the schedule is we have um, multiple release targets. Um, and that's not just the, the beta miles uh, delivery and the final release delivery, but we actually have multiple targets for each of those dates. Uh, the idea being we have a, an early target date, which is what Fedora contributors should really be aiming for. And then we have a target date number one, which is essentially the, the real one that we usually hit. Uh, and that's what the public um, and Fedora Linux users should be expecting. The idea there is if we set a little bit of an early deadline for ourselves, uh, we're not as likely to miss the actual deadline. Uh, it's sort of like when you set a couple of alarms, uh, you know, five minutes before you're actually supposed to wake up just to help make sure you're awake for your actual alarm in the morning. I'm going to jump into the tool we use to actually build the schedule now. It's called Smartsheet. Um, it's uh, software as a service that Red Hat pays for for internal product development. Um, and so that's what Fedora uses as well in order to um, be able to link that with um, you know, Red Hat development. You won't be able to actually you know, directly access or interact with this. Um, but I want you to sort of see the way we build the schedule. Um, many years ago, we used a tool called Task Juggler, uh, which is um, written in Ruby and Task Juggler version three doesn't have a GUI at all. So you're basically writing uh, your task by hand and then using Task Juggler to generate um, Gantt charts and uh, websites and things like that. And it works well, but the, the task juggler files are unpleasant to work with, let's say, <laughs> um, especially if, when you get very large and you have a lot of interdependencies. In Smartsheet, it basically almost works like, uh, like a spreadsheet, except it's designed specifically for schedule development and project planning. So I have up the Fedora 35 schedule. Um, there's some stuff that's mandatory for internal tooling, but I want to scroll down a little bit through some of these key dates. And you can see the final release public availability, the early and the target date number one, and then a current target. So the early target date is basically the point at which the entire schedule revolves around. The way we've developed our schedule is we pick the target date and work backwards to all the other milestones. Um, so in essence, everything is a certain number of days, weeks behind the target date. Um, and so when you think of it that way, it's sort of easy to conceptualize where everything falls um, and how if you change one thing, you change the other. Um, a lot of things are actually tied to whatever the current final target date is, but most are actually based on the early target. Because, for example, if we shift the, if we miss the early target and shift to target date number one, the current final target date changes. But, for example, that wouldn't affect 
the beta release because that's already done, right? Um, so like in most schedule tools, you can set a start and a finish and a duration. Um, a lot of these have a zero day duration because at the in the Fedora Linux release schedule, we're not really tracking individual tasks. It's basically just a lot of milestones uh, because the because you know developing a distribution release is such a massive task, and with the volunteer uh, community, you really can't micromanage down to like the individual task level. So we're lo really looking at milestones here. Um, and then, of course, you can define predecessor relationships between um, you know different elements in the schedule. So, uh, for example, right now the current final target date is set to start at the same time as line 51, which is the early final starts. Uh, you could also have things finish or start when the previous task finishes. Um, you know, basically all those other kind of relationships, and then you can set offsets. So the final target date is going to be um, the early date plus one week. Even though right now we only have a, through F36 schedules out, basically the plan is always the uh, the early final target date is going to be the third Tuesday of the month, and target number one is going to be the fourth Tuesday of the month. And the reason we do that is um, it's sort of a marketing reason, which is you know, still pretty important in the schedule. And that's because moving back from the early target to the you know, sort of public target, let's say, um, you know, people don't always pay attention to the fact that the early target is really for uh, contributor attention and the target date number one is for uh, public attention. And so if we miss the early date and we hit the date number one, which is what usually happens, they're still in the same month. And so, you know, going from October 19th to October 26th is still in October. It doesn't sound as bad as, you know, the same one week going from October to November. Now you're in a different month and that just sort of conceptually sounds different to people. The way we build the schedule um, is somewhat his, based on history. So uh, for 33 through 36, uh, because I knew that, uh, you know, REL 9 planning was going to be happening, I went ahead and made a schedule several years in advance, just so REL as a downstream of Fedora could, uh, you know, see what the schedule is and plan accordingly. Uh, but basi it's basically, you know, just save as and start a new schedule. A lot of these tasks are not necessarily things that are still valid. Um, there may be things that aren't on there that need to be. So one thing I like to do every so often is go to all the different teams that have uh, tasks in the schedule and just say to them, hey, is, uh, is this still valid? Are there things you need to add or things that need to be adjusted or there's stuff you're not doing anymore? And we recently discovered that there was a configuration that needed to be changed in some of the gating testing. And since it was relatively new, it just hadn't been put on the schedule, but we want to make sure that the release engineering team remembers to update that. So I added that task and that's this uh, update GreenWave um, product versions. And so that way at you know, certain milestones where the, num the different versions that might exist uh, in package updates changes, release engineering has a nice succinct list when they look at their tasks for branch day or for uh, you know end of life day, they can uh, update that accordingly. The schedule in Smartsheet isn't very helpful by itself because the community can't see it. The way we fix that is uh, I export it as Microsoft Project XML file and then we go to uh, some tooling written by uh, the Red Hat's uh, program management team to generate the websites that people see. So this is all on a PAGA repo. Uh, it has schedules back through Fedora 5, uh, Fedora Core 5. And uh, so the, the file we can look at, for example, 
is uh, Fedora schedule.xml. And, you know, it's an XML file, so it's not super readable or useful. But we have a make file that just calls another make file, basically by setting a variable. And when we do this, so now it's just generating uh, HTML and ICS versions and JSON versions as well of all of the different ones. Um, and then there's a script. If you give it the publish option, it'll actually just do an rsync to the website. So let's look a little bit more at how this works. There is a tool called Schedule uh, BGM Build Fedora. If we look at that, it's basically a kind of ugly um, shell script. But what it does is it has you, you know, basically declare a list of the different schedules you want to produce. And so this is a point where if we wanted to add another team schedule, let's say the llama herder spin had a, had some tasks that they wanted to have on the schedule, we could produce a schedule just for them by adding them to this report. Similarly, we could cut out things if there's a team that just doesn't have tasks anymore or they're not active. Um, and so this is, again, you see the flag show command. This is where those flags and smart sheet come into play because it's that limits it to only those, um, only the tasks with those flags. And you know, tasks can have multiple flags. Uh, so run the tool called schedule convert, which is available in PIP. And it just generates it, throws some HTML around the table, and it's done. Then in this repo, we also have, to make it pretty, um, uh, we have an index file, uh, which makes it, just lists it so you're not getting this boring directory listing. Um, and that index file also allows us to um, you know, list the, uh, you know, to style the current releases and then have historical as well. And then because the old version was pretty ugly, um, I wrote some CSS that, you know, stylizes it with the Fedora colors and, you know, improves some of the padding and things like that. Um, so we'll take a look at what that output looks like in just a moment. But both of those can be synced. There's a make file in the HTML directory that basically just R syncs that stuff over. Um, so there is a Fedora account group that you need to be in to push to that, but then you can just do an rsync and um, you know set up your SSH configuration so it uses the right key and sets your username cor correctly, and then you can just whoosh it all over there. So, for example, I could add an exclamation point. So we have the current version of the schedule. Uh, I'm not going to switch the screen sharing again, but if I run, if I go to the HTML directory and run make publish. So it copied that, and I refresh, and there's the exclamation point. Easy peasy. So this is where we try and link people to for the schedule. Um, so we'll take a look at Fedora Linux 35 because that's the you know, actively developed one. Um, and from that, that index page, everything starts out with the key schedule, which only has 25 tasks. And these are sort of like the really things you know across, across most of the project that people need to care about. But then as you can see across the top, if you want to look at what the Fedora project leader has to do, okay, Matthew doesn't do a lot around here, I guess. But you can look at, say, release engineering and see their tasks and you know the dates. Um, you remember, I talked about how we can add notes or links. Those show up in the HTML. Um, if you really want to look at all of them, that is available, the all tasks one. But um, it's not super useful. There's just a lot going on. 
Uh, you can also navigate back to the last two releases if you wanted to you know, go back in time and look at something. Um, I could probably add a go forward in time a release or two. That would be kind of helpful. Uh, this is all just sort of hand-coded HTML. It just gets plopped in at the beginning of the, the file. But that's really you know what gets produced. And so we can add new things for teams, you know, if there are groups we're working with that want to have um, you know, a schedule created because they're doing enough tasks and they want to have this reminder. Um, for the most part, we sort of rely on people to follow their own schedules. Um, there are certain milestones in there where reminders get sent, uh, but generally it's not a, you know, I'm not gonna go through each, you know, each day and see, all right, does anyone have anything to do? Do I need to remind them? Um, you know, it really is sort of a for your own guidance. And then when we reach certain cross-functional milestones, that's usually when there's a little more um, checking or and coordination from the program management side. You can also, um, if you want, you can take off the tasks.html and just add ICS and don't add a trailing slash. And you can download an ICS file so you can import that into your calendar. Um, and that's gonna be the same for uh, you know, any of the tasks. Um, and there's also a JSON file where you can get it in that format if you want to use it to as input to um, use some other tooling. For example, I think the the Packager dashboard pulls some of this in. I think from the release schedule and uses that to display some milestones. And actually, now that I think about it, it'd be really helpful to have links to those on each schedule page. Uh, so by the time this video is actually uploaded to YouTube, that'll probably be there. 